Hello, it's uh, Philip Cargon here on a lovely um, sunny, I'm looking up at a skylight which seems to be playing with a bit of havoc with the lighting here. Uh, I hope it's okay. Uh, on a 1st of July 2019, uh, I'm by the Thames in Walton on Thames. Lovely to see you. Richard from Cornwall is, is here and Daniel from Germany and Dean from Dorset. Hooray! Great, lovely to see you. Great to see you. Okay, so, Mario Lane, great. Um, Midsummer Magic. So, uh, I know some of you are gonna be in the Southern Hemisphere, and for you, it's midwinter magic. You're going to be at this, this time of the solstice, or just past the solstice time, moving into the new cycle. Uh, but I'm gonna focus on, on Midsummer Magic, and a little bit of magic that, uh, I've experienced recently in, 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 in Sweden. And that's, <coughs> excuse me, connecting with uh, dear Jonathan, who gave the tea with the Druid uh, last week while I was in Sweden. Thank you, Jonathan. That was great. And Jonathan Woolley explored in Tea with the Druid 79 uh, community, the importance of community for us and what it might take to, um, help build Druid community. And I've been with our community in Sweden uh, for, for a few days, uh, a few days ago. And in thinking about this, this question that, that Jonathan raised, um, I, I have come up with, or it occurs to me, that there are a number of factors that help to build community. When I looked at the time we had together in Sweden, about 80 members of the order came together from Finland, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, and Germany, and the Netherlands primarily, and then some of us from England. We were all together and celebrated Midsummer together. It was beautiful, and there's some, I'm gonna try and pop up some photos uh, on uh, the Facebook page and uh, Instagram and so on, because uh, it's a fantastically photogenic place, absolutely archetypal Sweden with lakes and, and forest and just wonderful. And the, the first ingredient, I think, was and is for Druid, closeness to the land. There are about four ingredients that, that I can discern in our community time together that were key factors in bringing, see what, see what you think. First, closeness to the land. You know, here I am in, in this very dull, let's face it, setting, uh, uh, practical but dull. And uh, many of us live surrounded by concrete and walls and glass and plastic and all the rest of it. So to take time being close to the land uh, seems to me so important. And as Druids, of course, we love nature and we feel there's a certain kind of energy that comes to you when you, when you sleep out in nature in a tent or in a little wooden house uh, that, that revitalizes you and connects you to what feels like is the essential in life. Which brings us to the second ingredient, which is simplifying our lives. Uh, our lives have become so complex now. Again, if I just look around this room with the, the electricity, the lighting, the Wi-Fi, the television, the microwave that's over there, um, uh, insulated, there's actually, if I could show you, there's the most horrifying thing outside behind those doors there. There is a garden made of astroturf. So there's no lawn, it's plastic. The lawn is plastic. Um, and, uh, and you hoover it. Somebody hoovered it this afternoon. I used to say as a joke to Stephanie before I mowed the lawn, I'd say, I'm just going to hoover the lawn. But here you really do hoover the lawn. Um, so our lives have become complicated and disconnected. And there's something about taking time out to simplify our lives, just to have no Wi-Fi, uh, to use our phones less, uh, to, if not at all, uh, to, to lead the simple life again. One of the old chief druids, uh, George Watson McGregor Reed, wrote a book called Simplicitarianism, where he advocated a, a, the simple life. Then the next thing we were doing in our time together in Sweden, and another group of order members was having a camp in Germany at the same time. And uh, there were people, an international camp of Obod, and people were coming together in Germany. And I'm sure these same uh, dynamics or, or ingredients apply, and I'd be interested to hear. If you were at that German camp, tell me what you think. Um, 
But the other, the other uh, ingredient, I think, necessary for this particular recipe of Druid community is honoring the time. There's a way in which a spiritual path makes us mindful, makes us more aware, and rather than just tearing through life, we are trying to open ourselves to being more conscious, living more in the now, in the magic and the, of the moment, in gratitude for the wonders and the beauties of life, and honoring the particular moment in the cycle of the year that we find ourselves in. And so when we were in Sweden, we honored the summer solstice. And we had one of the finest summer solstice ceremonies I've ever experienced. Uh, it was just lovely with the water of the lake around the pine trees, the sunshine, the blue sky. And then in the center of our circle, the next ingredient for uh, Druid community, which is heritage. We had a traditional Swedish uh, garland, which is put on the post. This is what they do in Sweden. They put up a, a garland of flowers uh, on a kind of maypole structure. And we tied clutes onto it for our wishes. And there were seven uh, poles that we had to step over to symbolize these seven obstacles that we uh, would work through to, to achieve our goals and so on. So, that's one thing that Druidry does too, is it honors heritage. And the interesting thing now with Druidry in our contemporary world is it honors heritage from wherever we are. So the Druidry we practice in New Zealand, for instance, includes the heritage of the lands there. And there's a way in which gradually we're finding, I think, the, an accommodation with a, with a, with a uh, honoring of our uh, European, if you like, and Celtic heritage, but also the wider heritage of whatever land and culture we're in. And so we were in Scandinavia. So we honored the Scandinavian heritage. We had beautiful singing as well with traditional Swedish folk songs. So we've got uh, living close to the land, living a simple life, honoring the time of year, the season we're in, the moment, the now and honoring our heritage and put all those ingredients in the cauldron and what do you get when you taste it you have this sense of community because humans are social beings and we love coming together and so there's something about being together with these ingredients uh, which which act as a context or as a holding for us somehow the magic is then able to drop in and in Scandinavia, there's this wonderful tradition of the sauna, which links us, of course, to the uh, Celtic sweat lodge, sweat house tradition that you find remnants of uh, in Celtic culture and the sweat houses in Ireland and in various Neolithic sites that archaeologists believe may well have been uh, places where uh, sweat house ceremonies occurred and of course taking us across to Native American tradition as well and there's some sort of interesting links that you can get there so this way this tradition of going into an enclosed space and cooking gently and then in Scandinavia you have this lovely tradition of going outside and plunging into the water so there was the there was the most beautiful and I see a fellow sauna taker Connie Blutenmeer from Germany. She's there. Hello, Connie. We had a wonderful sauna together. And um, you, you come out of the sauna and you dive into the water, this lovely peaty water in the lake. That is the Scandinavian sauna experience sort of par excellence. Um, and so I thought in line with our meditation two weeks ago where we went for a swim and that uh, seemed to work, let's take a sauna together now in the other world, the imaginal world, the world of the imagination. Because when you think about it, the sauna incorporates two elements, fire and water, the elements of Brigid, the goddess of healing. Saunas are very healing, and they work with these two powerful elements, the cleansing element of fire, the purifying element of water, 
you bring fire and water together and you get a real sense of healing, which is why when you have a great sauna, you feel marvelous afterwards. So on the last evening at the camp, a trusty group of us went into the sauna and baked quietly together and swam in the icy cold water and, and felt absolutely wonderful. And so now I'm going to lead you on a journey to do that if you want to. And uh, if you don't like saunas or you don't like being enclosed, if you don't like saunas, well, this, this is a virtual sauna, so maybe you'll like this one. Uh, but if you don't like being confined in, 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 uh, in closed spaces, just I'll suggest that you can imagine sitting by a fire uh, outside. So you've got open space, but you're, you're cooking gently, you're warming yourself up by the fire. And likewise, if you don't like swimming, if you, if you don't like getting in the water, uh, you can just imagine that you're just splashing yourself a little bit with water. So you, you can just control this meditation, this visualization to the degree that feels comfortable to you. And let's see how we feel. And so, so now let's just take the time on this Monday evening to take in a deep breath and then let it out emptying our lungs and then breathing in deeply again deep into the diaphragm the belly holding for a moment and then letting the air out through the mouth and as you do this one more time you can allow yourself just to let go maybe to close your eyes to better concentrate on yourself and as you do this you can, if you like, imagine that you're seated in the sacred grove. This magical clearing in the forest, beloved of Druids, a place where you're close to the land, close to nature, close to the earth, the stars, the sky, and the trees. And you become aware of the earth beneath you. And you just tune into the slow rhythm of the earth, allowing all your tensions to fall away. Breathing in the smell of the earth. And allowing a sense of stability and calm to settle you. There's so much life and energy in the earth. And just by opening to it now in your mind, it's as if you can feel some of that healing, healthy, balancing life and energy, feeding your energy body. And then you move your attention to the trees around you. You sense their roots deep in the earth, their trunks soaring upwards, their boughs and branches and leaves gently moving in the breeze. You sense the protection and the power of the trees. And as you breathe in, you breathe in the perfume of the trees, the smell of the trees. And you breathe it deep inside, feeling these essential oils, which is what's happening in the trees, exuding these from the leaves. And these go into our lungs. And in that way, it goes into our bloodstream. This is science. It goes into our bloodstream through our lungs, bringing us healing and vitality. It's called forest bathing. Bathing in the smell of the trees. And now we become aware of the sky above us. And you breathe in the energy of the sky. Breathing in the energy of the sky, which meets the energy of the earth within the center of your being. And now you become aware of the grove. You open your inner eyes of the imagination and you might see clearly or you might just have to pretend you're seeing something and that's okay too, just imagining it. 
seeing a little path leading out of the clearing through the forest towards a lake. And if you wish you take this path, you feel the presence of the trees, and you find, find yourself coming to a little wooden chalet that's resting on pillars over the water of the lake. And if you want to be outside, you find that there's a little fire burning outside, which you sit beside. And if you want to be inside, you go into this little wooden house and you find that there's a wood burning stove and it's deliciously warm. And you find yourself becoming warm. And you may want to take your clothes off so that you can feel your body you can feel the warmth on your body. And you can feel how this warmth is purifying you and cleansing you. How gradually you're starting to sweat and you gently rub your skin and you find that you're sweating and that that feels good. You rub your arms and your thighs and your legs. Do you feel the toxins coming out of your body, just cleansing you, getting warmer and warmer. And you realize it's an exercise that's developing the muscles of your imagination too. So this is an exercise that is developing your mental faculties, faculties of the imagination to imagine yourself getting hotter. And you've heard about these experiments with yogis who are strapped in in laboratories to machines and they can alter their body temperature. And you know you can do that too and you just find yourself getting hotter and hotter until the thought of cooling down becomes appealing to you. And so you come outside now and you find that there's a little ladder leading down into the water. And you can either dive into the water or you can just splash yourself with water or you can swim. So you dive or swim or splash into the water and you just feel how delicious it is to have this cool water on your body. It's so invigorating. It's waking you up. really waking you up and you swim around a little and then you climb out and you know you can do this again if you want to you can go back in and cook a little bit more or sit by the fire outside and cook a little bit more and then experience the power of fire and water of feeling warm and then feeling cool and of alternating these feelings. You know you can do this at any time. But just for now, you take a towel and you dry yourself vigorously. And even that feels refreshing as you become aware of your physical body and your energy body, freshening you up. You put on your clothes and then you have one last look at the lake in the little wooden house. And you start to walk back through the forest. Through the forest and into the forest clearing. And in the forest clearing, you find where you were sitting originally. And you sit down and you just close your eyes in the clearing and you feel that lovely glow the glow of having experienced hot and cold, fire and water. And you give thanks to the goddess Brigid for the healing that this has brought. And feeling blessed by fire, blessed by water, blessed by Brigid. You gradually let go of your awareness of being in the sacred grove and you become aware of being seated in front of your computer or phone or tablet, fully present 
here and now. And when you feel ready, you open your eyes. And I know that was a very short experience, but I think it's important to keep these experiences short for the purposes of, of this uh, broadcast. But you know, the idea is that these are experiences, skills that you can use yourself, and you know you can go back um, and, um, and uh, experience it again in, in more depth. Well, you can have a sauna for real too. You can do both. So, do you, do let me know how you found that. Were you able to visualize the uh, heat and the and the and the uh, the cool the cool? Um, there's something about these primary. You know, I talked about simplicity. There's something about the simplicity of imagining, sensing feeling warmth and then cold warmth and then cold and you know when you have a sauna or you do a sweat lodge you have rounds so you get really hot you sweat you you rub yourself you plunge into the water or you come out of the sweat lodge under the night sky splash with water and then you go back in again so this alter alternating of opposites it's very powerful so so do let me know um, do let me know if you uh, how you how you found that I'm going to go and get myself a cup of tea now and um, thank you for thank you for sharing this and do, do tell me how you feel about saunas in general whether you feel there should be more experience of saunas in, in Druid communities should we develop Druid sauna ceremonies uh, sweat house ceremonies. Um, do you personally like them or, or do you find that you don't like them? I'd, I'd be really interested to know. I'm very keen on them, but maybe other people aren't. I, I, I don't know. Um, so do let me know. And um, I'm going to end this now and send you lots of love. Have a wonderful uh, evening and have a wonderful week. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Okay. Bye. <laughs>